Shriyatapadakamalam Shri Kurum Vaishnavam Shya Shri Rupam Sakrachatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parjana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dhina Bandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tata Kanjana Gorangi about the, yeah, the sacrifice for this age, the yagya, the yuga dharma. We are, if, of course, you all know the sacrifice for the Kali Yuga is, of course, Sankirtan, right? Or the chanting of the holy names. So in Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, Lord Krishna is speaking the Vibhuti Yoga. Arjuna wanted to know how to think of him in so many different phenomena which we can see in the world. And so Krishna went on to describe his different Vibhutis. Of beasts he is a lion. Of mountains he is Meru. Of immovable, immovable things he is Himalayas. And he said, of sacrifices, I am the chanting of the holy name. Yagya nam japa yagnos me. Right? Tenth chapter, verse number 25. You can check. Yagya nam japa yagnos me. So japa is mentioned there. The chanting of the holy names. This is a sacrifice. So often people don't appreciate that this is actually a sacrifice. Sacrifice means we, we're giving up something. Sacrifice. So like we, sometimes we sacrifice material possessions. You give some charity or you sacrifice some property. Some people even sacrifice their lives sometimes for the service of society, for the service of others. They may sacrifice their life. They may sacrifice different material possessions. But in the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada explains that the, the greater sacrifice than sacrificing possessions is the sacrifice of knowledge, right? The ultimate sac the sacrifice of knowledge. And then Lord Krishna goes on to describe how we get knowledge. And that's in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna will speak that famous verse about try to learn the truth by approaching the spiritual teacher. So that's also a sacrifice, right? Of course, the sacrifice which is promoted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the 
Sankirtan, the Yuga Dharma. In every age, there is a particular process, a particular yajna. In the Satya Yuga, it was meditation. In the Treta Yuga, it was fire sacrifice. Dwapara Yuga, temple worship. And then Kali Yuga, Krishna Varnam, Divisha Krishnam, Sango Pangastra Parshadam, Yajnai Sankirtan Prai, Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. So, this verse is spoken in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. The, the Navyogendras, the nine Yogendras, were giving knowledge to Maharaj Nimi. And Maharaj Nimi wanted to know about the different incarnations in each age. Nine Yogendras, by the way, they are from the 100 sons of Rishabdev. Rishabdev had 100 sons. Nine of them were Mahabhagwats, the nine Yogendras. One was Bharat Maharaj, the great devotee after whom the planet is named. And then the others were all Brahmanas, or they were great. Some, oh, some were, nine were given land to rule because the different kingdom of Rishabhati was divided up. And then the others became Brahmanas. So nine Yogendras, Mahabhagwats, they were traveling around preaching the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam. Actually traveling around preaching, that is also Kirtan. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna speaks about, we just told you about Japa in the 10th chapter, but Lord Krishna also speaks about Kirtan. Right? Which chapter? Is it, which is the verse speaking about Kirtan? Nine. Hmm? Chapter 9. Chapter 9, right? Maharaj will give us the verse. Satatam Kirtan Satatam Kirtan Always chanting my glories, endeavoring with great determination. These great souls perpetually worship me with devotion. Krishna is describing Mahatmas, great souls, devotees are all considered to be Mahatmas because they're supposed to be always chanting the glories of Krishna. Right? Mahatmanas tumam parta daivin prakriti mashrata vajantya nanya manaso gyatva bhuta dimavyayam these great souls are under protection of my divine energy. Krishna is describing the Mahatmas, right? They're protected by Krishna. So devotees preach the Sankirtan movement all over the planet. Lord Chaitanya wanted, Lord Chaitanya predicted the holy name would go all over the planet. Prithiviti Achiyat Nogaroti gram sarvatra prachar hoi be morana. How's my Bengali? Okay? Babu Hachan? Very good. Very good. Listen, Bengalis, they like to hear this. Nogaroti gram. Every town and village. All over the planet. China, Russia, Africa, Australia, everywhere, South America, all over the planet, the holy name is being spread. This is Lord Chaitanya's prediction. People were thinking, oh, it is just eulogy. It is just, you know, nice poetry. It can never really happen. You know, people didn't think it could really happen. One, one time, one time I was in the Philippines. Uh, I was preaching in the Philippines in one place in the, the southern islands of Mindanao. It was a town called Davao. And we met this one group of people. This one man, he'd made a society. He called it the Kingdom for the Brown Race. Because the Filipino, their skin is brown, you see. 
So they said, our skin is the same color as the earth. So the, the earth actually belongs to us. <laughs> this man was a lawyer, actually. <laughs> Quite an interesting man. So he made this whole society, you know, and he had this one, this one man said, you're in charge of Russia. You're the minister for affairs in Russia. And you're the minister of affairs in China. And you're a minister of affairs in Africa. And these different old men and all. <laughs> they'd, all, they'd all stand up and say, yes, yes, yes. They never ever went there, you know. <laughs> they just dream about it, you know. The man actually, he would give them these positions. You're in charge of foreign affairs in America, you know. <laughs> you, know you sit in the Philippines, but you're overseeing America. And, yes, kingdom for the brown race. Haribo. <laughs> You know, they, were, they had their society and, and they had members and they'd meet every week and, and they would do this thing, you know, and he would sing, they would sing songs. And, so you could think, you know, maybe Lord Chaitanya's movement before Prabhupada came along was a little bit like that. You know, they were dreaming about spreading Krishna consciousness, but nothing ever happened. Nobody ever did anything. But Prabhupada actually went there and he did it and as soon as he got there to America and he got some people he sent them other places he sent this one devotee his disciple Upendra go to Australia and he sent Brahmananda to Pakistan and he sent you know he sent the devotees of course the three householders went to London you know he actually sent people to all these places and they didn't even have, heart. you know, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, when he was establishing the Gaudiya Math, he had this one disciple write a book, a very powerful book about the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was to be that that was the basis of them going to preach in England, a, a book written about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in perfect English language, that they could go there and use this book to establish the preaching mission. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he had that mood, you know, he wanted to preach to the Western world and he had this disciple write this very powerful book. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also guided them and edited and, you know, told everything what should be in the book. So that was in preparation for the preaching. In the same way, Srila Prabhupada also prepared a little bit for preaching. You know, he wrote his first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, the three volumes, Srimad Bhagavatam. If you ever, did you ever see the original Bhagavatams? The original copies, did you see? You can see every page, there's so many mistakes, typos and, you know, different errors and things. You know, it was Indian printing, letter press. Letter press. It was a very archaic system of printing. You, they had to make a, a metal stamp with every letter, you know. And so it took a long time to print the book. But Prabhupada somehow he printed three volumes of the Bhagavatam, and he took it with him when he went to America. <coughs> and he sold some copies on the ship. He sold to the captain. And so like that. Uh, this was this was Sankirtan. Prabhupada began his Sankirtan movement even before he got to America. He was already planning how to do it. So Sankirtan, Kirtan, you know, Kirtan, we come together, we chant the holy name, a few of us. But Sankirtan is a bigger thing. It's a much bigger effect. It's like involving everyone. It's not something which we just do for ourselves. Kirtan, Japa, you know, chant Japa, it's good for us. Now, of course, some people chant a bit louder, you know, right? Some, some devotees, you get some devotees, every temple you find somebody, they can chant really loud. <laughs> 
everybody runs away from them. They don't want to chant with, because it's chanting so loud. But it doesn't benefit many people. So kirtan, like that. Kirtan madanga, you can hear a little bit. But then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati coined the phrase Brihat Madanga, the big Madanga, because the sound of the printing press is heard all over the world. And Prabhupada actually saw how people from countries where we never ever went, somehow they got a book and they were interested in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada said, this is a Brihat Madanga. And Prabhupada said, this is a, the Sankirtan movement in the modern age. But even today, we see, even superseding the Brihat Madanga, we have our high-tech Madanga, we have computers, computer technology, mobile phones, and all of this. And from these things, you can go the whole planet without much difficulty. Right? Books can be put on the internet, free download. Right? Free download. Krishna Shetra Maharaj told me, you know, Krishna Shetra Maharaj, he's a scholar. He's, he took his PhD from Oxford in uh, religious philosophy. So he has a PhD from Oxford, very, the most prestigious PhD you can have everywhere all over the world you just say I have, I have a PhD from Oxford they respect you well please come give a lecture you know so he got, goes all over anywhere he goes he came, to, came to China universities he all opened up he can go in there give a class you know so he wrote a book uh, about cow protection and he told me he made a free download now usually academic scholars when they write a book, you know, they're really difficult. The really the English is very high and it's very deep philosophy, not so easy to understand. Did you ever read any scholarly books? Did you try? <laughs> yeah? You can look at Tamal Krishna Goswami's thesis. If you read Tamal Krishna Goswami's thesis, you can, it's really difficult. Every, you know, you have to read, every line practically, there's a word you want to look in the dictionary. Even if you're a native English speaker. You know, it's really high English, very high. Because it's written for academic people, for scholarly people. So Krishna Shetra Maharaj wrote this one book on cow protection. And he had it, he told me, he said he made it a free download. And 10,000 people downloaded the book. From the, that's amazing for an ac academic publication. 10,000 people downloaded it. Very impressive. So that's the Sankirtan movement today. Sankirtan movement is changing. Just like now with the coronavirus. So many temples have closed. No Sunday program. USA temples are closed. No Sunday program. UK. UK also closed? Huh? London, Soho Street, back to Vedanta Manor closed. I was listening in Rajumna Swami on YouTube. He said, Five airports in Moscow, all closed. Moscow airports, all closed. They don't want people, because they're so worried about the virus. So the airports are closed. Public transport, many places also, no, no transport. I just spoke to a lady in Bangalore yesterday. She told me, but Bangalore's practically closed down. The malls, the shopping centers, everything. All people working at home. Everybody just go home and work. Do your work at home. Schools also closed. Yeah, all the schools closed. So, Prabhupada predicted all of this. Prabhupada predicted. He said, this modern civilization will be a failure. 
It cannot go on. You know, we were, we were dreaming, oh, it's so nice, we'll get a new car, and we'll go here, we'll fly there. Now everything is falling apart. The airports are closed everywhere. You can't enter countries, you can't go foreign countries anymore. India doesn't want any foreigners coming in. So many other countries you can't visit. European people can't even go to America. Even if you're from Europe, they won't let you in America. This kind of... Prabhupada understood this modern civilization is a failure. It cannot go on. And we are seeing it now, unexpectedly, just out of the blue, from one little virus. It's all come about. And the whole world is falling apart. Businesses are collapsing. The airlines have no business. The stock markets all collapsing. People who have got their money in stocks, they're ruined. Everything is no value anymore. Prabhupada warned all of these things. So very important. You should have some land. You should be able to grow some food. You should have some cow, get some milk. And you can chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And of course, maybe some, for some time at least, Wi-Fi is still there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can preach all over the world. We can use it to do Sankirtan, to do our preaching, to tell people about the foolishness of this modern civilization. And the real duty, the real business of this human life is to develop, to develop our spiritual consciousness, which comes about by chanting the holy name. So we can introduce people to the philosophy of Krishna consciousness, and we can give them Prabhupada's books. They're all available online, right? We've got all the materials, it's all there. They don't need to purchase anything. Let them get the books online. They're free downloads and they can read and they can study and they can become Krishna conscious. Krishna consciousness does not depend on material facilities. Of course, very nice when we have a temple, people can, but even if there's no temple, still we can become Krishna conscious. In Srimad Bhagavatam tells uh, Lord Kapila's teaching was telling about the child in the womb. Remember that chapter? Have you read that chapter? The child in the womb? The child in the womb, it tells there are some children in the womb, they pray to Krishna. Not all children, but some children who from their previous life had the habit and somehow they, they take birth and while they're in the womb, they pray to Krishna, they pray to the Lord that let me out of this miserable condition and I will certainly worship you. So Srila Prabhupada in the purport to that section, he talks about how is it possible for the child to be Krishna conscious in the womb? And Prabhupada said, it doesn't depend on material facilities. We see there are many people with a lot of material facilities, they don't take advantage of them. They don't use them properly. But even you don't have material facilities, if you control the mind, we can fix a mind on Krishna and we can develop our Krishna consciousness. And the example is there in Nectar of Devotion about the Brahmana. The poor Brahmana who didn't have anything. He didn't have any material paraphernalia. Remember that story? That Brahmana is worshipping in the mind, he's worshipping Krishna in the mind. He was decorating the deity. In the mind he was cooking for Krishna. And in the mind put his finger in the sweet rice. And what happened? Burned the finger, right. So, 
we, even without material facilities, we can be Krishna conscious. So this crisis which the world is going through is a very great blessing for the devotee. The devotee sees everything as the arrangement of Krishna. And we think this is a wonderful opportunity for us to increase our Krishna consciousness and for us to take up more Sankirtan, to do more preaching. Preaching, we can make use of the technology, the, the Wi-Fi, this internet, all of mobile phones. We can use all of this to preach more widely, to give everyone, to awaken more people to Krishna consciousness. The Sankirtan Yagna is meant for that, right? Some people, they think, oh, Sankirtan, oh, that's weird, oh, no, you know. Some of the, some kids, they grow up and they grow up, you know, they don't have a very good impression of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and you, if you ask them, come on, we're going for Harinam Sankirtan, oh, no, I'm not going to go, no. I don't want my friends to see me. <laughs> All right? People think like that. They think, oh, that's weird, you know. <laughs> Standing, dancing, and then, oh, that's stupid, you know. They, they don't understand. They have no appreciation. But from the Srimad Bhagavatam, the words of the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Sumedasaha. Those who are taking part in the Sankirtan are described as being Sumedasaha. Su means auspicious. And Medasaha, brain, the intelligence. They have a good intelligence. Sankirtan is for those people who have a good purified intelligence. Those people who are not so pure, not such good brain, they will worship other gods. Alpa made saha. Bhagavad Gita again, Krishna is describing. Antavattu palam tesham tad bhavati. Antavattu palam tesham. You don't know Bhagavad Gita. You shocking lot. You don't know Bhagavad Gita. You have to study Bhagavad Gita. This is terrible. Bhagavad Gita, this is the basic ABC. Some people come and say, Oh, I'm Bhakti Vaibhav. I'm Bhakti Vedanta. They don't even know Bhagavad Gita. What a joke. So Bhagavad Gita says, Those who worship demigods, Antavattu Palamtesham Tadbhavati Alpa Medisham. They worship demigods. The results are limited and temporary. And those people who worship demigods are described as Alpa Medisha. They've got a brain which is very small. Prabhupada said, like stool. Not purified. Not Sumedasa, but Alpa Medisha. The brain is all dirty, all contaminated. <laughs> I have to purify the brain. How to purify the, the intelligence? By association with the holy name. You chant the holy name and it, will, it works, right? What does Lord Chaitanya say? Chaito Darpa Namarjana. To cleanse the mirror of the mind, right? The mind, cleanse the heart with the chanting of the holy name. This is very important for us. So get some association with the holy name and then give the association to others also. By, we all have the opportunity. Even though people are all staying at home, you can have so much association. You can do so much preaching. Our devotees in China, they've been inside now. They've been restricted for three months. For three months they've been at home. But the devotees tell me, say, oh, we're so busy. They're very busy. Because every day they have program. Four hours kirtan every day. 
Four hours they're doing kirtan. And they do it online. You know, each in their own homes. And they take turns to lead the kirtan. I listen sometimes to the recordings. I hear them doing it. Every day they have kirtan. They do the full, all the morning songs, the evening songs. They sing everything. And then they have also readings. They read Bhagavad Gita, Mahabharata. These different books are reading. And then we are giving classes also. We give lectures. I, I give class every Tuesday morning in Mayapur. I don't go to Mongol Arti because 4.30 is 7 o'clock there. And we have class from 7 to 8.30. So I give class 4.30 to 6. So like that, the devotees are keeping very busy. A lot of work chanting. And now they're also studying Bhakti Shastri. Because they didn't get the time to come to Mayapur and study. You know, they're Chinese, they don't speak English also. So they did, they're doing Bhakti Shastri at home. And one of the other girls who's in, who can teach the Bhakti Shastri, she also happened to be in Wuhan <laughs> when this whole thing happened. She'd gone to visit her mother and father. Her mother and father were from Wuhan. Right? Everybody heard the Wuhan now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's where, the, the, that's where that virus came from. It all originated there. So she was there in Wuhan. So Wuhan, nobody gets in, nobody goes out. So she has to stay there with her mother and father. And so and she's teaching Bhakti Shastri to the devotees around China. And another devotee also teaching Bhakti Shastri, one devotee from Singapore, who visits China sometimes. He's also giving class once a week. So like that, devotees are getting so much hearing and chanting. They said, one girl who had been here, and she went back to China, she said, oh, this is better than being in, in India. I have so many classes every day. I didn't have so much hearing and chanting when I was in Mayapur. <coughs> so like that, make use of everything for Sankirtan for preaching, for spreading the message of Krishna consciousness. Not just only selling books. That, you know, Prabhupada did that. That was time and circumstance. We have to remember everything depends. The time, the place, and the circumstance. We have to be able to adjust these different things. This particular time, the place, the, the circumstance with this virus, so many things closed down. Does it mean we're just going to sit and do nothing? Oh no, I can't preach anymore. No! Now we have to find other ways to preach. We don't just sit back and do nothing and say, oh, I can't do anything now. We have to find a way to preach, to reach more and more people. There's so much opportunity. There's so much opportunity for us to distribute this Krishna consciousness everywhere. This is Sankirtan. We have to have that enthusiasm to go and do it. Right? Utsahan Nishyayat Dayat. The very first thing Rupa Goswami is stressing. Utsahan. Enthusiasm. That one has that. Enthusiasm means endeavoring with intelligence for Krishna consciousness. We have to use our brain, our intelligence to think how to give Krishna consciousness to more people. There is so much to be done to spread the Sankirtan movement. I remember I was in Vrindavan when Srila Prabhupada left the world and we had his, you know, Smriti Sabha. And that means we invite all the God brothers, they all came and they all spoke about Srila Prabhupada and they were glorifying Prabhupada. So I remember one of the God brothers saying to us and he said, now you have to continue Prabhupada's work. Prabhupada put the foundation but there are so many more places to go, so much more to be done. Devotees were telling me how in Nepal, 28 centers in Nepal, 28, in Bangladesh, 96 centers. 96 centers. Bangladesh is a Muslim country. Predominantly Muslim. 
Muslim government, 96 centers are there for Krishna consciousness. So, Krishna consciousness is growing. You know, it began. Previously, there was nothing in Bangladesh. Now, so many devotees. Previously, never people hardly knew Krishna and Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> but by Prabhupada's efforts, by this Krishna consciousness movement's efforts, more and more people are becoming aware. We have to continue. There's so much more to be done. We should not think our work is finished. Oh, big temple is built. Now we can sit back. We'll just wait for the people to come. No. So much more is to be done. In Prabhupada's time, the devotees used to make life members here in India. And it was not very easy. It was not very easy. You get a few people in the beginning, but then after that, it was quite difficult. But Prabhupada said, don't worry. He said, when we open the temple, people will line up to become life members. And they did. When they opened the temple in Bombay, in Ajuru, people lined up to become life members. Now we don't do life membership work so much. It's not so important nowadays. There are other ways to get support for the temple. But just building the big temple, that is nice, but it does not mean that we just wait here and let everybody come here. The real work is to go there and to give them Krishna consciousness. There was one sannyasi in Prabhupada's time, he was telling Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I love Vrindavan, I will just stay here. But Prabhupada said, no, 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 your work is to go and give Vrindavan to others. Not that you just enjoy Vrindavan yourself. You have to go and give it to others. So when we come to Mayapur, we don't like to come alone. We like to bring a group with us. We like to bring a party of people from some foreign country. Then it's much nicer. Then we enjoy much more. And yet, I've been to Mayapur so many times. If I just come on my own, it's not so meaningful. But if I bring a group from some foreign country, then it's much more satisfying to share the Holy Dham with them. This is Sankirtan. Sankirtan. Prabhupada said, giving, not just taking for ourselves. You know, some people think Sankirtan, sell books, make money. That is not the mood. The mood is to give Krishna without thinking what we get for ourselves. We want to give as much Krishna consciousness as we can to the whole world. So Sankirtan movement wants to go all over the world. There are so many places they never heard of Krishna. You go to some countries they never heard of Krishna. You come with me, I'll take you a few countries. It's so difficult. Man. You go to Vietnam, people never heard of Krishna hardly. You go to North Korea, certainly nobody heard of Krishna in North Korea. And then uh, Lao, Lao also, small country. They need to hear about Krishna. There's so many places. <coughs> But if we go there and begin the movement, begin the Sankirtan movement, then in time it changes. Just like Prabhupada brought Krishna to the West. In the Western world people didn't know Krishna. Now they start to know. Now they understand a little bit. They know something of heard. Of course there's so much more to be done. Sankirtan is not just only chanting and dancing. But we have to teach the message of Krishna. We give the books, then we have to teach what's in the books as well. Just like countries nowadays, many places where, where they've done a lot of book distribution, now they send the devotees out 
to give classes, to give lectures in different places, especially Calcutta, Bombay, the city, Delhi. The devotees are going out every night giving lectures, having classes, giving seminars everywhere. Not just only chanting, but that has to go on. The kirtan has to go on. That is part of the Sankirtan movement. But it is not the, 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 the whole of Sankirtan. Lord Chaitanya did Sankirtan for the ordinary people. But for the special devotees, he discussed philosophy. When he met Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya, they discussed philosophy. When he met Ramananda Rai, they discussed philosophy. Prakasananda Sarasati, again, he explained Vedanta Sutra. So like this, Lord Chaitanya was showing, we have to also know the philosophy. We have to speak the philosophy. We have to preach it to everyone. Give people a chance to come to the higher level of Krishna consciousness. So thank you, Dan. Of course, it's very nice when the music is very good, good kirtan. We have nice kirtan melas, wonderful kirtaniers, very good, very important. And it helped a lot when the devotees went to London. Just imagine when George Harrison met those devotees. If they had not been able to do good, good kirtan, it wouldn't have been the same effect. But because they were very, quite quite skilled. Prabhupada had personally trained them before they went to England. Prabhupada had trained them in Kirtan. So when they came there to England, they were already quite proficient in Kirtan. And then they got special instruments, you know, they got the Esaraj. And, you know, they've been, they even went to lessons. They took some lessons on it, how to play it, you know, nicely. So it made a difference, it helped to have a very big impact. And of course that impact helped so much to establish Krishna consciousness. But Sankirtan is not limited. We shouldn't think all the work is done, we have so much more to do. So this virus, this is a test for us. How determined are we to go on? Last night, uh, Yashomati Mataji was speaking about courage, right? Courage to fight, to go on despite obstacles, despite all the difficulties. We have to go on. We should not be thinking, oh, it's all over. Vaishashika Prabhu preaches in the Silicon Valley in California. He is giving class every day on the internet. The temples are closed. Does it mean he doesn't give class? He gives class every day on the internet. Many people listening. So the same way, we have to also get busy. We have to get connected. We have to get people ready to hear and to chant. They need to be encouraged. Because people, neophyte devotees especially, they become very worried. Oh, I'm going to die. Maybe I'll get the disease. Maybe I'll die. Oh, maybe there'll be no money anymore. How will we live? You know, people are worried. We have to preach to them. We have to give them Krishna consciousness. But Krishna is testing us. This is the material world. We cannot remain here forever. We should be happy. This is a chance for us to go back to Godhead. Right? When Maharaj Pariksit got cursed, seven days to live. Ah, very good. Very good. Give up everything. Just sit and hear and chant. Right? It's a time for us to get very serious in our Krishna consciousness. We don't have to worry about anything. Just depend on Krishna. 
They what well, in Bengali they have been saying Mare Krishna Dakke Ke Dakke Krishna Mare Ke. Krishna wants us to die, we will die. If Krishna wants us to live, we will live. Why we should worry? We should just chant Hare Krishna, be happy. Not, not a problem. There's no problems for devotees. The problem comes when we forget Krishna. So Sankirtan is the best way to remember Krishna by doing regular Sankirtan. And Sankirtan, we said, not only chanting the holy name, but speaking, reading the books, let people hear. You make a, a, a you know, a, 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 a reading club, and you get one of Prabhupada's books, and you get people to join your group. We're going to read every day, you want to join my group? And every day you get, and you sit and read every day together, read Prabhupada's books. This is very nice. This is Kirtan. We need to have more kirtan. <coughs> the world needs to have more kirtan. So this virus has stopped all the, the, the nonsense kirtan, all the prajalpa. Instead of all the prajalpa, now it can be good kirtan. Kirtan people. <coughs> the loud chanting of the holy names, right? That is the real way to deliver the world. So we don't have any problems, right? Okay? No, no questions, right? Everybody convinced. How am I doing? Oh, where's, where's Maharaj? Okay, five minutes before Maharaj comes. Any questions? Any comments? Do you give class in Chinese? Do you speak Chinese? Yeah, I speak some Chinese. I speak some Chinese, but if somebody's there to translate, I will get them to translate. But if nobody's there to translate, I will speak. So time, like when I went to Sitala, I spoke, right? Yeah. What you talk? Tell the Chinese now. Make sure why you talk. Okay, John. <laughs> yeah, I can speak something, but not so good as Chinese, obviously. The Maharaj Chinese is very nice, very powerful. Yes, Prabhu. How to keep the enthusiasm always? How to keep up the enthusiasm? By Kirtan. Kirtan, right? Get, you have a video, get a video of Mayapur and watch all the devotees chanting. Maybe you tune in to Mongol RT and you'll see all the devotees. You know, and you can dance with them. You know? If you want to be enthusiastic, you can be enthusiastic. It's just your mind stopping you. You have to, you have to want to be enthusiastic. You have to have that desire. Then you can be enthusiastic. It's not, oh, you have to do this, you have to do that. No, you just have to conquer the mind. The mind is saying, oh, no. The mind is making so many objections. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to listen to that mind anymore. I've been listening to that stupid mind so many years. Let me forget this mind. Let me overcome that mind. Right? Look, if we want to be enthusiastic, you can do it. You have to want, you have to have the what, desire, I'm going to do it. That courage has to be there. Yes? Leader, uh, he loves the taste for chanting and that he can't all the group, all 
Who is the who is the one who loses the taste? The leader. The leader loses the taste for chanting, and the whole group loses the taste because the leader goes down. So very important. The leader has a great responsibility. You take a take a, a, a leadership role. It's a big responsibility that other people are depending on you. So you have to be strong. Just like any brahmana, any teacher, any head of society, even the head of the family, they have a duty, they have a responsibility to show the right example. They have to, they have to lead by the example. And other people, they're, they're depending on that example. That's why they're given that position as a leader. So it's very, very sad when the leader gets affected. So the leaders have to stay strong. They have to be very careful to keep up their hearing and their chanting, their reading. They have to protect themselves. Just like the doctor, doctor has to go and treat sick people. He has to protect himself. He doesn't want to get infected. So the same way the leader has to protect himself by hearing and chanting. He has to be very strict and he has to have strong faith in this process, what we're doing. Because other people are depending on him. Right? It says in, Bhagav in Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a verse that says, Don't become a parent unless you can deliver your child. Don't become a teacher unless you can deliver your students. Don't become a spiritual master unless you can deliver your disciples. Right? You're taking on that responsibility. You have to understand how other people are depending on your example. And it's very unfortunate when somebody in a leadership position will have some problems, have some difficulties. So we have to try to help also the leaders, to keep them strong. If you have a, you have to, you have to help them, to keep them in Krishna consciousness. Okay. Otherwise, they may get problems. <laughs> so here's a nice leader. <laughs> He's been a leader for many years. He's a, one of the GBC. He's the first Sanyasi disciple of His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj. Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj has many Sanyasi disciples. So He's kindly come, sacrifice. You see, He's doing a yoga, sacrificing His time to come to speak to us today. <laughs> We're very grateful to His Holiness, Bhakti Purushottam Swami Maharaj.